Hello everyone, um, great to be back again. Just going to do a very quick video because I've got to go out uh, today for the whole day. And uh, following on from yesterday, I thought I'd just do a quick, um, I wanted to do a quick video on um, just an introduction to the pagan witnesses and a problem with the name Jesus Christ actually. I found some interesting things um, just recently. Of course, we know that Jesus Christ was more, much more a title than anything else. In the pagan world, it was a Christ or Christo or Christo um, meant a few things, anointed one and so on. Oil it had a relationship to oil, just like Crisco today, the oil company. Um, uh, it's just to carry through from this old, old word for Mashiach in the uh, Hebrew and Egyptian, Mashiach. Um, <laughs> in the oil as well, in, in crest, uh, anointed one, uh, righteous one, and so on. Um, so I'm just going to read this pretty quickly. Uh, a small introductory insertion uh, commencing this chapter. The following was discovered towards the end of the writing of this book. We felt it pivotal uh, to the arguments that are to follow as an important differentiation can be made between the words Christ, uh, Christian and Christian, which in the earlier strata of Christianity's history actually appears in the pagan world, having no particular relationship to either Christianity or any man named Jesus. Um, yes, so in the in the Greek, Christus, um, like the name written by Suetonius, covered later, was a common name among, and this is a quote, and I quoted this yesterday, just for just to recap, a common name among slaves. It was also a title affixed to individuals such as Phocion the Good, um, the uh, 4th century BCE Greek politician. Various gods from a variety of religions were given the title Crest. From Isis, Isis sorry, to Apollo to Mithras, multiple Jewish um, apocalyptic uh, texts uh, of, the ty ty of the time also would talk of a righteous one or Crest. Um, a few lines further, the two authors make another truly amazing statement. So this is from uh, Christ Before Jesus. Uh, Wingo and Brit state the following, and thanks greatly to the authors for revealing this. And it's a really good book. I suggest everyone go out and get a copy. It's on Kindle. I got a Kindle version. Um, no, I've got an audio, audio book version and the Kindle version, I think, actually, as well, because it's that good. Um, they state the word crest is uh, used throughout the New Testament manuscripts. We have much more than the Christ version of the spelling. Furthermore, whenever we see something described as good, it is often some variation of crest. For example, in uh, 1 Peter 2.2, 2, when it says the Lord is good, the Greek is literally the Greek words I cannot, um, yeah, uh, or good <laughs> crest the Lord. Even non-canonical material has instances of crest. Listen to this. The manuscript Papyri Gratia Magia, um, 151227-64, uh, a collection of spells and magic from the 100s uh, BC to the 400 C, cites Jesus Crest in the incantation to drive out uh, demons, uh, for example. Yes, it is indeed, this is me again, yes, it is indeed true that Yeso uh, and Crest is invoked in examples even like the Papari Gratia Magi, Magikie, 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 above an explicitly pagan text, and it's possible that this may not even have anything to do whatsoever with the person of Jesus in Christianity, as wild as this may at first sound. It's in fact true that the primary meaning of these words relates uh, relates divine salvation. It's used uh, its use yes so in a non Christian magical text suggests that the name carried an inherent uh, perceived power, regardless of the religious tradition from which it originated. So what is in a name? We see in examples above multiple references and just one in the specific reference to the uh, Papari Gratia Magikia, a case where the work Jesus, where the word Jesus Christ is used. Um, 
but in a Greco-Roman context. This is separate from Christianity, and it appears nonetheless, but it appears nonetheless in the Gospel of Marcion, quite probably the earliest gospel. We also find no coupling of the name Jesus Christ to it is a wild theory, but it, is it conceivable that the name wasn't really uttered at all in any uh, certainty or with any certainty within the first century? In actuality, the earliest texts in Christianity carry the abbreviations um, we call uh, nomina sacra. Examples were XS interpreted as Christ or Christ, and IS interpreted as Jesus, whilst KS was interpreted as um, Lord. Uh, this was uh, the way Christians in the earliest manuscripts always referred to Jesus, and it wasn't until the fourth century that that began to change. Uh, with this, with this in mind, is it at all possible that regular Roman names might be repurposed to give a credence to the evolving story of Christianity? In some of the following Roman texts, we find uh, Crestus or Christos actually spelled out we shall find that they were already popular names with their own roman meanings paul's earliest manuscripts and indeed much early christian literature for hundreds of years only used these abbreviations nomina sacra for jesus in the instances that follow then it shouldn't simply be taken for granted that christo or crestus has to refer to jesus of nazareth this is a very hasty conclusion uh, this came as a revelation to the author and many uh, may help to explain why, as we shall see, uh, they may not have had anything to do with uh, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the son of Joseph or Jesus Christ, names which at no time are referenced in the following pagan mentions of Jesus or, or Christ. Um, not specifically, not Jesus Christ, not the name, not the title, not any person. Um, we would refer to as, um, you know, with a name, with a, a, a title, with a first and second name, or a, a name from somewhere, or son of somebody, nothing like that. In the two specific cases of Tacitus and Suetonius, they came from a period that historically still rests on a cusp where they, where there may not have been any discernible Christian presence in the in Rome at this time wild as that may seem what is also strangely true and certainly not in the canonical sense because it just doesn't appear to be there what is also strangely true and worthy of consideration is that the time christ the name christ was denoted um, sometimes for followers of a totally different god let's read uh, from the emperor hadrian uh, the egyptians whom are uh, whom so this is him speaking. The Egyptians, who you are pleased to commend to me, I know thorough, um, thoroughly from a close observation to be a light, fickle and inconsistent people, changing with every turn of fortune. The Christians among them are worshippers of Serapis, of Serapis, and those calling uh, themselves bishops of Christ scruple not to act as the uh, volunteers of that god the truth is there is no one whether ruler of a synagogue or samaritan or presbyter of the christians or mathematician or astrologer or um or magician that does not do homage to seraphis um historia augusta this is hadrian uh, twenty two twelve. so he's saying here these christians are worshiping uh, Seraphis or Serapis, strange stuff. And this is he's talking in the uh, early, really early second century here. It is highly unlikely that these worshippers had anything to do with Christians we know of. But Serapis, as a relationship to Christianity, such as Osiris, carries uh, many parallels with Jesus, whom Egyptian, um, whose Egyptian name was pronounced Asara. Seraphis is a composite god derived from Osiris and Apis, so Serapis. A bull deity created whole cloth by the Ptolemies. The name Christ used above seems only to uh, be relaying a name meaning literally anointed. The Adrian and Adrian speaks whilst not evoking at any time the Christian God or any other component of Christianity. Um, recall the Christ that Christ simply meant 
uh, anointed to Greek-speaking Romans. Hadrian was emperor between 117 and 138 CE and never elsewhere talks about Jesus Christ. The name was a composite anyway, and he self-evidently never speaks about uh, Christian or Christians again. This, uh, that the name is, however, used in reference to Serapis should be a dead giveaway that the name Christ alone cannot be used as a positive proof of the man named Jesus of Nazareth. Either this, either this or these earliest of Christians uh, history seems to be telling us about actually worshipped another deity altogether. Tertullian says as much in a couple of verses uh, testing to this connection. Um, uh, let's go. Uh, again, this is Ad, um, ad Nations, Ad Ad nations, uh, yeah, one twelve. The Tertullian. The majority of you imagine that the Christian God is one of your gods because all your gods are shown to have a human shape. In fact, some among you have even written that our God is Serapis. Serapis, right? He of course denies any link, but he is writing generations later. Could this be an admission that um, through the first century and early second century in Alexandria, the great wellspring and hotbed of syncretic religions, ideas and mystery schools, that the term Christian was being picked up by pagans who didn't yet know about Jesus Christ? Even Clement of Rome and Paul's correspondences, besides not knowing any facts about Jesus's earthly life, only begin uh, being attested in the second century. The fact that Adrian, Adrian uses uh, Hebrews and Christians in the same sentence and Messiah, Messiah, meaning the same thing, anointed, and that Christianity was born out of, uh, out of uh, Judaism, all points towards this possibility. Let's now see what the... Uh, Okay, so I'm not going to go on too much. I want to keep this within 15 minutes. Um, but these nomina sacra, just going back to this, these holy names, again, abbreviations are only um, in all of the early texts. They don't reference uh, Jesus Christ or audio es o Cristo in the Greek, right? And in one instance, now I flashed this up yesterday, um, of a list of the, the earliest manuscripts um it, one of them comes out and it's actually it, it's talking about a time um at about two at around about the 260 to 70 mark right this isn't actually even a this is the earliest text we can detect from that list and it isn't even a christian text this um p oxyrinthus xl three three one one nine um i checked on chat gt chat gpt it's actually a correspondence um around the reign of valerian and galenius um yeah again 259 to 60 um and it's so it's not actually a christian text it has um the word christians in it but and this is fairly late right but it's not it's not really christian um this is a pagan text um and they're using this word Christians, uh, but we don't find the word Jesus Christ. I mean, we find the word Jesus Christ coming along in, um, I mean, hundred, uh, uh, Christian manuscripts like hundreds of years after uh, the advent of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, right? Um, in Marcion's text, as I said, it's not there. He uses the word, like the verb, so for um, saviour, the year so, but not Jesus Christ. And here's now, we are converging on this re very real probability that Marcion's gospel was the first, or one of the earliest, there might have been a kind of proto-Mark, but Mark and Marcion's gospel, Mark, Marcion, <laughs> yeah, Mark, um, are pretty similar, they're pretty related texts anyway. So, to round up, yeah, it's all rather interesting. I thought I'd just do something today because I really want to put out videos every day. Um, I hope we get, we're getting an idea now of what, what I'm trying to do here. I'm really trying to remain completely conversant with, with uh, primary source texts here, really understand the layout of the first few hundred years of Christianity. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the fact that Hadrian is talking about uh, Christians here um, and that they are worshippers of Serapis, the Christians among them are worshippers of Serapis. That's his word. And those calling themselves bishops of Christ scruple not to act as the uh, votieres, sorry, of that God. Yeah, I mean, this is this is quite an interesting quote here. It's it's referenced early on um, in uh, in the historical record, Historia Augusta. Worth checking out. Anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Thank you so much, guys. Peace and love. Uh, see you maybe tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Cool, cool. Bye bye.